What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I will fix the top pulley arrangement on the Fitness Reality lat pull down attachment for the 810 XLT Supermax power cage. I have done full reviews for the cage and the pulley system, and I'll put links down in the video description. There is no issue in pulling down with the top pulley, it works perfectly. The problem with the top pulley arrangement is when pulling at a forward angle, like for overhead tricep extensions or face pulls. When pulling at a forward angle, the cable rubs on the steel bar, but it's not right. Over time, the cable sheath and the bar will wear. This should be a roller, not a steel bar. I work as a mechanical engineer and design complex machines for a living. I love this cage and pulley system, but this is a design flaw. I was told this area was redesigned and fixed in early 2023, which shows that Fitness Reality knew it was a problem. The picture even shows someone pulling forward from the high position. However, for the tens of thousands of us who purchased this before they fixed it, I will show you a solution. I will show prototypes, drawings so you can build it yourself, and a design that I plan to have available for sale if you don't want to build your own. Here is the top pulley area of the kit. I redrew it in CAD. I would personally cut and weld a solution, but I wanted to design something simple that can be easily added or removed without disassembling or modifying the cage. Here's the prototype design, two simple brackets, three bolts, three nuts, and a roller. Here's the kit only, the brackets, bolts, and roller. It bolts snugly around the square tube here in this opening, and the two bolts tighten the side brackets to secure it. The bottom bolt is just an axle for the roller, which rotates on the bolt. When installed on the rack, the roller is slightly below the steel bar, so the cable will roll on the roller, and not the bar and the side brackets have a little chamfer on the bottom corner and a little radius on the top corner to clear the cage features. The brackets have to be fabricated, but I try to keep it as simple as possible as flat plate with three holes drilled in it, and both brackets are exactly the same. There are other ways to do this with bearings or bushings, but my goal was to keep it as simple and inexpensive as possible so you can build it yourself. Now, let's make it. The brackets need to be fabricated, so let's knock those out. I already have some 1 inch wide by 8 inch thick plate, but you can also purchase a strip from a home improvement store. First, I marked the size and center punched the hole locations. Then I drilled the holes. I used a 17 64 drill bit, which is a tight clearance for the quarter inch bolts that will be used. Then I cut it to length. You can use a cutoff wheel as shown, or a hacksaw. Last, I cleaned up the sharp edges with a grinder, but you could also use a file. And since we need two of these, I used my duplicator. I have the small version and can only do small parts like this. The brackets still need a few more simple modifications. First, I held the bracket in place. As expected, the top corner interferes with the cage. I marked the actual interference. Then I added the chamfer and the radius. I used the bench grinder, but you could use a hacksaw and then clean it up with a file. To add them to the other plate, I used my feature duplicator. However, I recommend just clamping them together and grinding them at the same time. Then I hit them with some paint for corrosion resistance and so they will look better. Last, let's talk about the roller, then install the kit. I'm using the smooth, unthreaded parts of the bolt for the roller axle. With a correct length bolt for the brackets, a portion of the rolling surface is on exposed threads. I don't want that. I'm using a longer bolt, so the entire roller contact surface is smooth. This results in a few extra threads sticking out past the end of the bracket. For the roller, if you go to the hardware store, you will find short plastic spacers. Do not stack short spacers. The resulting seam in the center can damage the cable. A full length roller is required. You may need to purchase it online. I bought 5 feet of it because I'm planning to make some kits available for sale. I cut it to length then board it out to fit the axle. And I made some timing marks around it to make it easier to see it rotating. For the axle bolt, the unthreaded portion can be rough and create excessive friction. I polished it to give it a smooth surface, so the roller will rotate smoothly. Now, let's install the kit. Slide one bracket in place with the two bolts that capture the square tube. Then, slide the other bracket on the other side with the bolts through the holes and get the two nylon locking nuts started. Then tighten them down snug. Due to clearance issues, you'll have to use an open end wrench or a gear wrench on the top. 
there's plenty of room for a socket wrench on the bottom bolt. Now it's time for the main event, the roller. Insert the roller between the brackets. Slide the long bolt through. Then tighten the nut until it's snug and the axle bolt is fixed and cannot rotate. But don't over tighten it. You don't want to crush the brackets and pinch the roller. The roller needs to rotate freely. And here it is, complete and functional in all of its majestic glory. Now let's use it. Pulling the cable away, the cable rolls on this roller and does not rub on the static steel bar. It's perfect. Now I can enjoy these exercises with no worries. My cable is not getting worn out. It's rolling. And exercises that pull straight down are still no problem. The new attachment does not interfere. It's all good. Then I tested it for one month and I was satisfied. So I made an updated design that I plan to have available for sale if you don't want to build your own. I will quickly cover one more prototype before we get to the updated design. The other idea was to eliminate this bottom roller and use the bolt under the cage tube as the roller axle. The new roller would be shorter and captured in the existing slot in the cage tube for the top pulley. It would eliminate a bolt, make the bracket shorter, making the kit simpler, easier to install, and lower cost. This sounded promising and it worked well as long as you pulled away straight. But if you track to the side, the cable can fall off the pulley and get damaged. If this happened once, the cable would be ruined, so it's not an acceptable design. The full length roller is much safer in this situation, but you still don't want to be pulling sideways to the extreme edges. And since we're talking about prototypes, I tried adding some graphite powder to reduce the rolling friction on the axle. And it was a mess and unnecessary, but I had some so I gave it a try just for fun. So now you know about that. Now let's move on to the updated design. It's essentially the same as the prototype. The big difference is the improved side brackets. The side brackets are laser cut and I have several of them because I plan to have some kits available for sale and I cleaned them up to remove sharp edges. The new brackets are thick so they'll hold up and precision cut so the holes are the correct size and in the correct positions and it is a cleaner design. I also slightly lowered the roller so a tool will fit on the bolt head and the nut of the lower two bolts. In the prototype, they were a little closer and the tool would not fit. I had to capture them with an open end wrench. And last, everything is stainless steel. The bracket, the bolts, and the nuts. It will never corrode or rust and you're welcome to paint it if you want to. So I've been using the updated roller kit for about a month and it's been great. I have zero worries when pulling away from the top pulley. If you want to build it yourself, here are some dimensions for the kit. I have zero problem sharing these for personal use, because the whole point of this channel is to help people out. But of course, there are other ways to do it, with bushings, bearings, precision shafting, or shoulder bolts, but my goal was to design it to be simple and low cost. I would love for you to implement your ideas and improvements, email me pictures of how it turns out. And if Fitness Reality starts selling a similar add-on kit to solve this issue, well, you know this is the original design. And I know they've watched my videos because they've left me comments. Vern from Usawa Fitness has some experience with this. He designed a DIY cable crossover system with chains a couple years ago and even contacted them and shared what he was doing with no response. And now Fitness Reality is selling this design for $549. But maybe it's just a coincidence. I don't know, I'm just sharing facts. I'll put a link to his video down in my video description. If you don't want to build it and you do choose to purchase my kit, please keep in mind that I'm not a fully staffed factory. I'm just me. Everything is sourced and built by me in the United States. And I'll put the information for how to order the kit down in the video description. So that wraps this up. I hope it was helpful or entertaining. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.